All right, moving on with five things that make JavaScript weird and awesome. We're going to be doing scope and context, which are clearly some of the most complicated things to understand, especially when you're new to JavaScript. Um, and a lot of people have pointed out after watching some of the first videos, they're saying, hey, these things exist in a lot of languages. You don't know what you're talking about. Um, absolutely, they exist. It's the, the unique event-driven environment of JavaScript. That just means they're going to show up a lot more often as problems and they're going to be a lot more unique sometimes in the way that they show up. That's what I mean by that. Let's get into scope. Uh, and a lot of developers mistakenly think that scope and context um, are the same thing, uh, and they are not. Scope means variable access, variable ah, access, uh, which is when a piece of code is running, what variables do I have access to? That's the scope. Context uh, is the value of this. Whenever a piece of code is running, the value of this is the context. And so you can remember that because context has a T and this has a T. So context means this. Uh, scope does not mean this. Uh, it doesn't have a T. <laughs> so let's get into scope real quick. Um, I'm going to define var a equals one. And so by default, when you're coding in JavaScript, you're in what's called the root scope, the, the base scope, which is the window object. When I just created var a, it actually made window.a. I can go window.a, and that equals 1. I can also go a, and a equals 1. I can also go window.a is exactly the same as a. Yes, it says true. So I'm on the window object right now, the root scope, and I made a variable called a. Let's make a function here. And let's run it right away. So now what I've done is I've created what's called a child scope. Um, I can now create variables b equals 2. And after I run foo, I'm going to try to console.log b. And it's going to say that's undefined. Because b was created in the scope of this function, it wasn't created in the root scope up here. Uh, let me kind of show you how that works. Uh, we got the parent scope up here. And we've got the child scope in here. And it works just like parents and children when you're talking about cookies. Uh, if I go parent, if I'm a parent and I go out and buy a box of cookies, by default, my child gets access to the cookies because they're in the pantry and they're my child. Now, if my child saves up his hard-earned money and buys his own cookies, there is no way in heaven or hell that he is going to allow me access to his cookies. They're his cookies. He's the child. But if I put him in the pantry, uh, Lord knows that he gets access to them because I'm the parent and he's the child. That is exactly how variable access, how scope works in JavaScript and in most programming languages. Uh, maybe if not all programming languages. Uh, and so when I create a child variable, the parent does not have access to it, but I have access to A. In here, I can go console.log A, and it will work. So it's going to console log A, which is 1. Then I'm going to try to console log B, and it's going to say B is not defined. I have access to A, but the parent scope does not have access to B. Uh, let me go ahead and now show you. Let's go variable A equals 2. So now when I console.log A, it's going to console log 2. What I've just done is I've created what's called a name conflict or a scope conflict. I have defined a variable in my child scope that is the exact same name as a variable in my parent scope. It's not illegal, but all that's happened is, is now I have two A variables in existence. I have window A and I have A within this child scope. So now I have broken the connection. I have no way of accessing A outside of, I have no way of accessing this A anymore uh, unless I happen to know how to get to its parent object, which is window.a. So I can console log window.a because this is defined on window. Um, and then I can go console log A. So it's going to console log one, which is window A. And it's going to console log two, which is my current scope a. So it's created what's called a naming conflict. Uh, let me go ahead and do one more thing here. And after I run foo, I'm going to console log the value of a. So I'm console logging a from the root scope, and it's going to console.log1, which is the value of a in my scope. I ran foo, it created a new variable called a, but it did not touch the a in my scope. a is still the value of 1. I can console log A in here and it would be 2, but console logging A out here is 1. It's very interesting, something you definitely need to keep note of if you're using the same words over and over again like my element or my name or my value. 
uh, if I take off the VAR, here's what JavaScript's going to do. It's going to first look in the scope that I'm in and say, has a variable A been created yet? So if I do variable A equals one up here, A equals two down here means, first thing I'm gonna do is look in my scope and see if A has been created. Okay, it has been created, so now this A changes this A, or points to this A. So now this A will be changed to a value of two, console log A will still console log one down here. If I remove, if this never took place, A equals two, it's going to look in my scope, find out that A has not been defined, so it's going to look in my parent scope and say, ah, there's an A, A now points to this A. So now if I save and refresh, it console logs two. And if I do VAR, and save and refresh, it console logs one because this one has not been touched. So I can actually modify the contents of A in my parent scope if I don't do VAR. If this A had not been created, then it would keep looking up to the parent scope and look up to another parent scope, another parent scope till it got all the way to the window object. And if there was no window.a, oh, my battery's about to die. If there was no window A, then it would create it for you right there and give it a value of two. So now if I console log A, a equals two and window.a has been created and equals two. If you hear about polluting the root scope or trying to keep the root scope clean, that's what that means. If you forget to do VAR, you just created a root scope variable that every everything across your application has access to. And you do not want to pollute the root scope. It just creates for a messy application. One way around it, which I will not I will not describe in detail, is if you use the use strict, then it prevents you from cluttering the root scope. It now says A is not defined because I never did their A on the root scope. Uh, console log A, A does not exist. So you can look up more on what use strict actually does. So that is scoping in JavaScript. That's variable access. I guess I'll just give you one more example where A equals one. Function foo says var a equals two and console logs a, not console dir, console logs a, and let's make another function. And this will go a equals three console log a. So now what I'm going to do if I run foo and if I run bar and then I console log a, it's going to run foo, foo is going to create an a and console log it, so that's going to console log two. Then if I run bar, A equals three. It's going to look up in my parent scope. It's gonna look in this scope, no A exists. Gonna look up in the parent scope, which is my root scope, and it's gonna find that A equals one. It's gonna change that to three, and then it's gonna console log A. So this will console log three, and then we will just run a console log an A, and this will look in the scope that I'm in, find this guy, which has now been changed to three, Oh my goodness, I feel like I'm even confusing myself. It's going to console log 233. Three. So there you go. That is scope in JavaScript. Let's get into context. The real kicker, the real thing where people blow up their code all the time.